Hi, good morning, everybody, um, or afternoon or evening, uh, wherever you happen to be. Th but thank you for joining us. Um, you can, uh, you're all muted. Um, if you want to turn off your videos, you can. That's entirely up to you. Um, it, it, as I'll explain later, if you want to ask questions later on, uh, you'll be able to use the chat feature on your screen uh, to ask questions. Um, my name is uh, Tony Ross, Director of Communications and Marketing at Provalis Research. Thank you for joining our Lunch and Learn today. Before I introduce our presenter, I would like to, I would like to tell you that today we have released version 9 of WordStat. Um, we put out a press release this morning, um, which you can see on our Twitter feed and, on, and you can look at a lot of the features on the What's New page on our website, but wait till after the Lunch and Learn before you do that. Um, it has many, uh, WordSat 9 has many new features, including the ability to analyze almost all languages, including Chinese and Japanese, as well as expanded pre and post processing options with R and Python. Um, you can also upgrade uh, to WordSat 9 uh, by going to the pricing section of our website. Okay, on to today's business. Um, the title of today's presentation is how to reveal the underlying intellectual structure of the domain with WordStat. Our presenter today is Bozidar Vlasic. He is an assistant professor at Katholika Porto Business School and a distinguished researcher at the Research Center in Management and Economics, Universidade Catholic Portuguesa in Portugal. Since 2018, he holds an international PhD with honors in economic analysis and business strategy from the University of Vigo in Spain. His main contributions are published in journals such as the Journal of Business Research, Technovation, IEE Transactions on Engineering Management, J of Intellectual Capital, and European, excuse me, European Journal of International Management. He is an active member of the IEE Technology and Engineering Management Society and the European International Business Academy, and the chair of the EAE of the International Business Academy Early Career Network. At the end of the presentation, as I said, if you would like to ask questions, please send them to us through the chat feature on the right-hand side of your screen. We will take as many as time allows. And now I'll turn the presentation over to Bozidar. Thank you, Tony, very, very much. Uh, be before I start, I believe there are some more uh, participants in the waiting room, if, if you would like to accept them, and, and then I will kick off. Yes, I'm doing that, and I'll, 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 take, okay. off, I'll take off the waiting room uh, okay. Perfect. thing, but they're all coming in. Okay. So, uh, first of all, thanks, Tony, for for uh, introduction. As as he mentioned, I'm a full time assistant professor at Catolica Porto Business School in Portugal, where I'm also a distinguished researcher. And since last year, I've been invited and I'm, I've been uh, assigned a, a role of visiting professor at several institutions, uh, such as Catholic University of Lille, uh, University Vital Business School, and University of Dona Goritz in Montenegro. Uh, I also hold the position of visiting research fellow at RMIT in Australia and uh, visiting scholar at the Faculty of Economics and Business in University of Zagreb, Croatia. Um, due to the heavy usage of, of uh, Provalis uh, software, I've, I've also been a uh, licensed Provalis research trainer, and this is the part of uh, the part of what I do uh, and part of my research um, is being published in several top tier journals. Uh, depending on your field, you, you might recognize some of them. Um, and quite sure with, uh, with a quick Google, Google search, you, you will find the contributions. Um, essentially, in, in these uh, first four outlets, uh, JBR, Journal of Small Business Management, Technovation, and uh, Transaction Engineering Management, uh, appear uh, papers published uh, with usage of Worsted and, and QDA Minor. And essentially what I will try to do today is to outline um, how did we perform these studies on, on one particular example. Um, and in order to do that, I will, I will begin by elaborating on what is the intellectual structure. So where do we start from? Um, there are several uh, concepts that portray intellectual structure, but the one that I'm in line with is by Shafiq in 2013, who 
outlined that uh, intellectual structure represent uh, a set of salient attributes of the knowledge base and provides holistic understanding. So what should be our job when portraying intellectual structure is to outline how and what. So how some topic is addressed, how some intellectual field is addressed and what is in there, right? So if, if we look at the intellectual structure of any field, uh, regardless if it's in business or any other uh, major fields, let's say, uh, it is usually consisted of some underlying theory of a set of themes that are investigated, uh, methodological aspects, level of analysis, depending on, 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 on the particular field that, uh, field that one is interested in, it might be a certain level of industry, etc. So where do we start from? Before we enter into the worst that could a minor and I show you hands-on example, I would like to uh, devote 10 minutes, no more than that, of uh, preparing how we are actually making our database and how we are actually making our case before analyzing uh, what is being done in a particular field. Um, you will notice through the presentation, and given that this is recorded, you will have no uh, hard time accessing these, these um, references. I've, I've tried to portray them always on the side on, or, or in the lower corner. So uh, at any moment, uh, you, you, you have opportunity to, to refer to them. Essentially, one of the major issues that uh, my fellow colleagues or, or junior researchers often come across as, as challenging is to identify the particular topic or the intersection that they would like to portray. Um, that is not the case for everybody. Some of us already have very defined topics that we are interested in, but in some cases, colleagues would like to find a particular topic of their interest. And uh, in order to provide some guidance on that, I, I tend to refer them to the Academy of Management Journal uh, editorials published in 2011 that particularly speak about topic choice and the research design. In addition to that, there is a set of videos published in the Academy of Management and International Journal of Management Review about do's and don'ts. So how to conduct a, a, a topic choice and how to design the style, right? So we are not going to devote uh, a lot of time today regarding that, but rather we will devote time to the sampling, fieldwork, and most importantly, task uh, and analysis. Essentially, there are, uh, numerous approaches uh, how fellow researchers tend to conduct the, the mapping of the intellectual field, but I'm in a progressively fine of the one that is labeled as progressive focusing model of qualitative research process that was published by Sinkovic and Kanalfold. Essentially, the idea here is to go back and forth. Um, there is, or at least to the best of my knowledge, there is no process that cannot be enhanced and there is no process that does not provide the opportunity to learn and learning has tendency to happen to trial error activities that we are actually coming out as a, as a more equipped with, with knowledge and here are a set of references that might help uh, all of you interested in portraying the intellectual structure of a field that are uh, giving guidelines on how to conduct sampling field work analysis and, and findings some of them are uh, portrayed here from Lopez and Duarte or Kraus, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, what we are going to do now is to go step step by step, and we are going to start by sampling and and access. Um, as for the sampling, in, in a few months ago, in organizational research method, uh, Professor Hebel published a, a, a very good overview of sample selection in systematic literature reviews, where he portrayed how to collect the data. Uh, for the particular field to be mapped. Um, it usually starts from identifying relevant research items. And this is um, something that I will devote a few minutes later on, but for now, I would just like to outline that um, during my <laughs> review career, I'm, I'm at the beginning of my career, but I was privileged, privileged enough to, to review in top tier journal and so far around 40 or 50 top tier submission uh, came across my, my email and, and I had the opportunity to look at them, where most of them uh, come short is actually the items that they identify as relevant or the search query that they perform uh, that could be identified as relevant. Um, there are some rule of thumbs that I've adopted and I picked up during, during my, my training uh, at, the, at the PhD program, which is, first of all, always to be aware of where we sit on, so what's been done before us, uh, how the other colleagues did perform their search, 
which can help us execute our search at a, at a, at a higher pace and at higher quality and validity. Uh, the other thing is to do the track of the research steps because it comes very often necessary to repeat some of those steps just to ensure that we performed uh, all the robustness checks, etc. And very often, especially if you are interested uh, in uh, mapping the intellectual field for the publishing purposes, reviewers might ask you, how did you execute certain steps? So it is very relevant to keep track of every single step that is being, that is being done. Um, application of non-content related inclusion and exclusion uh, criteria is something that I'm very cautious about and I don't have tendency to recommend because very often uh, I, I read even in the top tier submissions that uh, my colleagues uh, point out that they downloaded some uh, items or, or some parts of intellectual field from sources that are very hard to to be found or very hard for us as reviewers to replicate so i cannot really see that intellectual field how did it collect all the all the aspects um apart from that when it comes to the screening um, it is very important to be frank and, and forward how did the screening process happen what were inclusion exclusion criteria and then to finally disclose the list of those items that are included and based on which the intellectual field will be will be portrayed. Um, as for that, there are some rule of thumbs that we can um, that that we can take as accepted to some extent. I have no uh, reference regarding the time period covered, although several senior scholars and editors of the top tier journals uh, outline those time frames that could be five year, ten year, or twenty year period. Um, my preference tend to go to no constraint and i have tendency not to put any constraint when mapping intellectual field because i believe that intellectual field to be properly mapped needs to be holistic and thanks to the provalis uh, warstat and kuda minor that is now quite easier to be done um, given that the software uh, allows you to perform the, the mapping of intellectual field uh, without much of a hassle and and uh, it, it's extremely powerful um, four principal research approaches that can assist one in identifying items. There are four predominant approaches. One of them is the journal-driven approach. So every intellectual field have certain journals that are seminal. Uh, so if, if we look for international business, which is, which is my dominant field, we have a Journal of International Business Studies, Journal of World Business, International Business Review, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a set of... Uh, articles that map the intellectual field by using journals approach. So they select a journal, then they select the, the articles, reviews, or whatever is their interest from the particular journal. Um, Database-driven approach is the aspect where the scholars have tendency to search by particular keywords. And what is favorable always is to perform the search by um, covering more than one database. Um, my preference usually goes to Scopus and Web of Science. I will not dedicate much time today to, to show you how to perform those aspects because there are already a, a bunch of tutorials available online. Um, so with simple Google search, you, you in, even on, on the very Scopus and Web of Science uh, web pages, you can, you can find the tutorials. The other approach is the seminal work-driven approach. So these are, um, this is usually the approach in which uh, those interested in mapping the field take an opportunity to collect the seminal papers and review them. What is the benefit of this approach? Uh, you are looking at the cherry on the top. So you're looking at what is the best. Um, but that sometimes have a tendency to neglect some of the works that were published in a journals that might not be top, top tier because they were, for example, counterintuitive or they were published a bit ahead of their time um, and just didn't, didn't catch the eye of the audience. Um, so there are some critiques in this approach. It is definitely a robust approach, very often used, but uh, I'm always cautious if choosing that approach. And finally, the, the preferred one is the combined approach in which the, the scholars have tendency to do the database-driven approach and then, uh, let's say, reassure or triangulate it with a, with a journal-driven approach. So first they extract all the information from these databases and then they uh, cross-check them with the journal-driven journal approaches. These are just some of the uh, ways that uh, relevant items might be collected that can help us portray 
the intellectual uh, map of the particular field. Um, what is in and out perspective and why this previous aspect of choosing which approach, choosing which period to be covered and being friend and direct with identification of the articles is very relevant. Um, Kudia, Miner and Warstad is extreme, are extremely powerful and they are, we can say to some extent, capable of delivering wonders. But it's very hard to deliver wonder when the input for that wonder is not the way it should be. So if you put the uh, items that are supposed to map the intellectual field into the software, we cannot expect that that intellectual representation, representation of that intellectual field will be representative. So that's why we have garbage in, garbage out. Um, just a quick example. In one of the review processes, I, I came across a submission that was as following. The, the scholars identified through their database search, so they performed the, the database search, uh, 2,123 submissions. They identified some duplicates after they overlapped uh, Web of Science and Scopus, and they came across 1,936 uh, articles based on their title and keywords. Once they looked into the title and keywords, they excluded 428 and so on and so on. Their final number of studies to be included in mapping the intellectual field was 51. So they started from 2,123 and they came to 51, which means that their search query is very steep. That usually tends to be a problematic search query, which would come very hard for anyone to replicate in the future. So it would be very challenging for anyone to find the reasoning how these 428 were excluded. And usually us as reviewers, when we try to replicate every single step that is being performed to make sure that, that the, the, the quality has some methodological process, it is almost impossible to do so. So that's why I always try to recommend to stay away from garbage in garbage out uh, approach. Um, as I mentioned, Worstad and Kudia Miner can do wonders, and we can have organized garbage, which is interesting to have to some extent, but definitely could not be uh, accepted in a, in a top tier publication. And we cannot portray that as mapping of uh, intellectual field at the representative level that we definitely extend the, 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 the frontiers of the, of the field. Having said that, what is the approach? I, I have tendency to look at this very interesting uh, representation that I picked up during my study. So what would be understood as a high impact paper? Law of gravity, of course. Um, orange is also fall is the law of gravity. Well, that is something that we can observe. So maybe that is not something uh, we are interested in three, but wind influences the speed of the object falling, moderating the law of gravity. That's something interesting. Why I'm referring to this? Um, there are several intellectual fields that are embedded and we know it for, for quite a long time. Um, but if you look another shade on that, if you look at it from a different perspective and explain it in a different view, that is something very interesting in portraying the intersection of intellectual fields. So one of the latest publication that I published with my colleague uh, is actually at the intersection of artificial intelligence and marketing. Artificial intelligence is among us even before that many talk through expert systems, etc. And marketing is definitely a, a, a field that is within us for, for, for numerous years. Yet intersection of those, those two is something that we can categorize within this last picture with the influences, the speed of object falling, moderating the law of gravity, and so on and so on. Having said that, once we collected the data, we made sure that our criteria for inclusion is robust and sound, we are entering the process in the words that itself of uh, dictionary building. So we need to uh, content analyze uh, the particular uh, intellectual map. Intellectual field, apologies. Now, here is something very relevant. In Professor Olivier Fourier, who was actually one of the founders of, of, of this approach, together with my PhD supervisor, uh, Miguel Gonzalez Loredo, and, and, and my colleague and, and their colleague Marina Davis, um, published a very interesting point of view uh, around one year and a half ago. He portrayed that there are three different approaches how scholars have tendency to portray intellectual field. One of them is expert view, um, that has tendency to be qualitative. So, 
uh, experts in the particular field have tendency to portray their opinions and points of view regarding field. Now, there is a lot of subjectivity bias in this approach. Another approach is uh, more citation oriented. So the scholars have tendency to use bibliometric tools such as was viewer um, or the R packages for, for portraying the field. And very often they are subject to, to um, estimates rather than their points of view. Um, and here comes the third approach, which is the content analysis that is breaking the best of the two worlds, right? So it combines the expert view with the bibliometric approach, with the citation analysis. And this is something that uh, Warstad and Kuda Minor enables us to do, right? So they enable us to create a dictionary that is assisting us when mapping the field. Um, process of building the dictionary is, um, I believe, very well explained at Pravalis website. And just a, a, a few lunch and learns before, uh, Dr. Mike Hine gave a, an outstanding lecture uh, on how to build a dictionary. So I will not devote a lot of time on, on explaining that, uh, but I would uh, suggest you to take a look, look at this uh, lunch and learn video that is available at the Pravalis uh, page and, and see what is the process of building the dictionary it, itself. What I would like to do in the second part of, of today's session is to, to go with you in a hands-on uh, example of one of my recent publications with my colleagues um, on the topic of open innovation in the manufacturing industry, which was published in a top tip journal, uh, Technovation. So just to go, um, this is an open access uh, publication. So uh, a simple uh, search on Google Scholar will uh, enable you access, full access for free to the, to the, to the, to the, to the publication. Yeah. Um, the theoretical basis that we took was open innovation. So we were interested in open innovation within the manufacturing. Um, there were several calls the, and the increased number of publication uh, in this direction uh, gave us uh, a go ahead uh, that this topic choice is actually sound and, and that there is a necessity to synthesize and portray the, the intellectual uh, map of this particular field. For the research design, we use the hybrid narrative approach. And if you look in the paper published by Paul and uh, Riel Criado um, in International Business Review, there are different type of uh, reviews that are recommended there based on what is the objective of the review itself. Particularly in this one, what is being portrayed as uh, let's say favorable is that it gives opportunity to author to mix several different approaches together. That's why it's hybrid. hybrid. And the narrative part comes that enables to portray the map of the field, right? The sampling we perform through Scopus and Web of Science. So we, we combine two, two databases and the analysis was performed through CUDA and, and Wordstat. So what did we actually do? Uh, the search query consisted of open innovation and manufacturing. Mm, the search query yielded a total of 397 results, among which 110 were duplicates. So basically we had 287. Out of those 287, only 48 were not relevant to, to us because they were mostly dealing with innovation or closed innovation. And as such, they were excluded. So as you can see, this is very direct and straightforward reasoning why a number was excluded. And it's a number that is not as large and is that case that you mentioned before. So this search query actually uh, yields a number of results that uh, doesn't bring any alert, right? So it's not concerning the amount that are not fitting the, the search query. Good. So then we entered the Warstat and CUDA with a particular goal to perform multiple correspondence analysis. So this is basically an analysis, and I'll speak about that uh, in, in a bit, um, which gives you opportunity to portray whether some uh, content is present or not in a particular article, and then to portray it in a two-dimensional space. Good. Now, what are the following steps? Once you select the articles uh, from the any source, so journals, seminal, or, or Web of Science and Scopus, in this case, we take Web of Science and Scopus, it is very relevant that they are exported to the Excel sheet. Once you eliminate the duplicates and once you uh, see which of those should, should remain, 
a very important aspect is to assign identification number. This identification number is not to be changed until the article is published, until the, the publication appears. Why? Very often it is um, asked by the, by the reviewers and, and you want to go uh, back and forth with your database to see why did you exclude some paper? Why was that paper or why was that part of intellectual field not more represented? So having a, a stable ID number gives you opportunity to always reflect what was uh, going on through the whole through the whole process. Okay. The other thing that uh, I like to uh, always and Tony Tony might uh, elaborate on that later on. Um, I, I I tend to save as uh, Excel, but um, essentially. Other formats work as well. So comma separated value or tab separated value tends tend to work as well, as well as access. And what I, I'm just more familiar with Excel, so that's really up to you uh, which, which uh, type of format you will choose. So basically once we enter the CUDA miner, uh, we create a new project, we import the data for web services, and then we uh, choose the Excel. In that moment, uh, a new window will appear in which uh, you have uh, Outlook like this. Now, um, Tony just mentioned that there is a version 9. I don't know how substantial changes are there, but I believe uh, many of these things still, still remain um, within, within the, the, the new version. Essentially, what we are interested here and why we need that ID. For example, in this particular uh, window, we have cases, and there are cases one, two, three, four, five, etc. And if you look at the variables in Ceph, one of the variable is that ID. Now, it may happen that during the process, you eliminate some case, which is going to mess the, 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 the organization to some extent, but you will still able to reflect on which article or which review or which paper you're referring because of the ID number, because ID number is stable. That's why it's very relevant to, to take a, a good note of those ID numbers and not to change them uh, at any moment in, in time. What else do we have here in this particular window? And I am not going to dedicate a lot of time on this because uh, QDM Miner uh, and Proval is provided uh, a numerous, uh, very insightful tutorials uh, on QDM Miner and the same for Worsted that elaborate what is within each of those drop down menus. So I will just refer to those that we will actually use for, uh, for this particular uh, approach of mapping the field. Essentially, <laughs> in the cases, you can perform the filter which enables you to filter, for example, per year or per topic or per decade. And that is something very relevant. So in one of the paper by uh, my PhD supervisor, uh, Miguel gonzalez Loreiro, they portrayed how the culture in the field of uh, alliances changed over the time and they compared the decades. And this is something that uh, CUDA Miner enables you to do with ease, right? So it enables you to filter by the decades and then perform the comparative between the, the decades or the years or however you, you might choose to do so. Moving forward, another interesting aspect is the variables. So there is a spreadsheet editor in which you can actually uh, assess all of those aspects that you might do in Excel. And this is now really up to you, how you feel more comfortable, whether with the spreadsheet editor provided by QDA Miner or going back to Excel, making any adjustments there and then bringing it back again by uploading as a, as a, as a new uh, part in, in QDA Miner. Okay, once we organized our data sheet and we, we make sure that everything is here, we are going to analyze and then we click content analyze. In that moment, a new window will appear, which will ask you which text to analyze and in relation with what. So what are we actually analyzing when we are interested in portraying the intellectual map of a field? We are interested in analyzing the title, the outer abstract and the outer keywords. And here is something to be aware of. Um, both of, if you choose a database approach, both of those databases are giving you the keywords provided by the database. But be attentive because they tend to be misleading. Why? Uh, both of those databases also wants to increase visibility of, of the articles. So they have tendency to put the articles and label them as such, although they're not really touching that topic. Rather, they're touching some other topic. But this is, the, this is the way that those databases work. And we want to analyze them in relation with ID, with the number that is assigned to those, um, to those particular articles. Once we select these op options and we click OK, 
the words that is asking us, would you like to create a new categorization process file or open the, 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 the one that you already have? Um, there are two approaches here. One is um, to take, let's say, the approach where we only take those words provided by words that as uh, exclusion, for example, exclusion list, which is, which is very rich, and we merge it with some of the other uh, categorization files. What I mean by other categorization files? Mm. In this particular, I will show you that in a bit. So this is uh, just to mention for you now. So this is a, a list of uh, scientific contributions that used Worstat and CUDA minor um, back to 2000 in one way or another. Uh, obviously, as a, as a Provali software uh, improved over time a newer version appears, the, the number of keywords or the number of, of the teams uh, enlarge, etc. cetera. Um, but if you would, for example, choose that in, I don't know, five years or 10 years, replicate uh, my study on immigrant entrepreneurship, you don't have necessarily to go from zero. You already have a dictionary that is available there and content being performed on an older version that you can download and upload for your uh, mapping processes, right? So this is one of the greatest benefits of uh, Worstat and, and, and CUDA, CUDA mine, right? It, it enables a replicability um, with, with ease. Good. So this is when we want to open an existing categorization process file. What I have tendency to do when I'm dealing with a, a completely new field, I only choose the exclusion list and I build my categorization. Um, obviously, some categories can remain from previous ones, such as geographical approach or methodological keywords. Obviously, always need to go back and forth and check them, but this is already a, a, a push. It enables you to, 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 to move faster through the process of, of building a dictionary. Um, if, if this is the first time that I'm uh, tapping into the particular field and I'm mapping it for the first time, there is nothing similar being done before which is very doubtful at this moment. I, I believe we progressed uh, quite a lot in the last, last few years. Um, then I only choose the exclusion list and I start building it from, from zero through. Okay, so once we enter the, the, the Worstat, there are always uh, a set of tutorials provided by Provalis that can help you see uh, what is within which drop-down menu, but I will only refer to those that are uh, for this particular aim of mapping the intellectual field. For example, um, the one that I'm very um, cautious about and I like to put forward is uh, this line here that you that you may see, which uh, let me see if I can annotate. Okay, so basically what I'm always trying to be very cautious about is, is this one, pre-processing, substitution, exclusion, categorization, and post-processing, because uh, most relevant things are actually happening happening here. What I mean by this? In the first one, pre-processing, we need to be aware of portraying which text to include. It happens very often. Um, it actually, it happened in one of the earlier version. Now, now uh, not so much. Um, sometimes the random sample uh, is activated, which means that only one out of five is being, in being uh, used. So be very attentive that none of these options are actually selected. Um, steaming, uh, limitization, and preprocessor is already uh, set up, so there is no need to, to, to think too much about that. Depending on what kind of text you are actually analyzing, it might be very relevant for you to see which text to include. And uh, what would you like to analyze? Would you like to analyze only the first 500 words up to the end of paragraph, or this particular option does not relate to what is aim of your, of your uh, mapping? Next, as for the exclusion, um, I have tendency to start with the selected exclusion list, the one that was shown before. Um, but then I also like to include some of the terms that are uh, identified as um, making noise. When you think about mapping the intellectual field, I tend to see it in the following way. So if you imagine that there is a puzzle in front of you and you want to put all of those small pieces, um, you are actually only going to make a picture out of those pieces that fit together. So if you have puzzle, if you have some part of some other puzzle within your puzzle, it's impossible that it fits. So it's making noise and you try to remove that. When thinking about the exclusion, I tend to think like that. Let me make sure that I have only pieces that are going to help me 
create my own puzzle. And the whole story of mapping the intellectual field is to make sure that you use as least as possible uh, parts of the puzzle and see the picture. I, I don't know if, if, if you remember, I believe many of you do, back in the day when we were all a bit younger, maybe uh, putting those puzzles and playing with them, we would try to see which picture appears at some moment, and then we would eventually finish the puzzle, but we were always first interested to see the, the, the big picture. And this is what we are trying to, to do here. Um, so where do we start? We want to make sure that there are also some uh, parts within the exclusion that are really making noise. So for example, if you look at the abstracts of vast majority of articles, they have at the end of each abstract, for example, who, who is published by? Wiley, Wiley Periodical, John Wiley, etc. So that is all candidate to be excluded, not to be part of the, of the mapping process. Okay. The next part is the post-processing. Um, rule of thumb is to remove any items that occur more than 85%. Why? Because they have tendency to, to draw the map toward the, the center. Um, what does that mean? They, 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 try and they have tendency to, to share uh, too much similarity with the remaining of the parts within the map. So it will give us a deviated picture of the field that we would like to, we would like to portray. I cannot uh, provide you any particular reference for this um, because there is not much methodological papers using Worsted. We are crafting one now, um, but essentially this is a rule of thumb uh, that, that is accepted to, to the, to the to the high extent. Um, another interesting aspect is extraction. And this is all what I have tendency to do before doing the analysis. Mm. When you go to the extraction, there is a particular part which is misspelling and unknowns. Now, uh, given that Provalis constantly updates the software uh, and they're really doing their best to uh, keep up with the ongoing changes, there are simply some words that scholars have tendency to come up with. And uh, Provalis, uh, Kuda Miner, and uh, Worstead might recognize it as a misspelling, although they don't have to be. So for example, in 1996, uh, the new term was coined, which is competition. But not whole academia accepted it and acknowledged it as a term. So if you look at Misspelling, you can observe here that competition is being suggested to be replaced by competition, which is not the case because competition represents a term that puts together competition and collaboration. Basically that competitors can collaborate together. And this is something that, for example, if you are interested in the field of competition, might, might create a, a problem. So what I like to do also before going into the building the dictionary is to go to the extraction, check the misspellings and make sure the all pieces of my puzzles are there, that they are really uh, organized in a, in a meaningful way. Good. Once that is done, we can go into the process of creating a dictionary. To create a dictionary, we click on new and the program will automatically save it in your computer. But later you can choose the, any folder that, that might come handy. What I have tendency always to do is um, to save it in a, a location that is shared um, given that I, I, I use Dropbox and, and OneDrive and, and work on several different machines. So um, the benefit of these dictionaries that can be brought at any moment and you can work uh, at any moment in, in, in time. <laughs> now, once we create the general dictionary, then we would like to add categories. Um, and there is something very relevant. As I mentioned in the beginning, every intellectual field is consisted of several aspects or let's say broader, broader uh, groups. Uh, those are theoretical foundations, themes, method, and geographical context. Apart from that, we can include industry, we can include, for example, level of analysis, but these four have tendency to, to remain. And another thing I would suggest to you in, in performing this aspect is to always organize them. Now, um, you can use any type of organization. I, I simply like to use ABCD. Um, and keep in mind that uh, when saving, instead of the space, try to use the, the lower line. Um, it is something that I, I, I recommend you because if you would like to ex export this uh, dictionary later to R or any other program, um, it, will, it will read it better. It will recognize it uh, a bit better. Okay. As I mentioned a few moments ago, uh, instead of 
building all of these aspects, it is very handy to know that there are already a set of fields that are being mapped uh, that you can now take a look and map from a different perspective. Um, just to just to give you an, an, an idea. So for example, the, in 2008, Professor Fourier published the structure and the evolution of strategic management field. Then seven years later, uh, Gonzalez, together with Abis and Fourier, performed uh, strategic management research in the Baltic area. So they, they developed the study, uh, building to some extent on the study that was published before. Um, furthermore, for example, in the, in the 2017, my PhD supervisor published Culture and Innovation. And what was being done there served as a foundation for the field of open innovation. So there were certain aspects that uh, give us uh, uh, understanding on how to perform the coding and to perform the, the, the analysis. Uh, I believe on the on the Provalis website you also can find uh, a numerous uh, journals uh, journal publications that used Worsted and Cuda Minor, and they also have dictionaries depending on the field in, in which you are interested. Now, once we created our dictionary, we are actually going to see uh, when we created some parts of our dictionary, right? We are going now to see which keywords or which terms are included and which of those are left over that can help us definitely craft um, our content analysis a bit better. As you can see in this field of open innovation, we identified theoretical foundations regarding um, knowledge-based view, resource-based view, sustainability, etc. Uh, terms that are included in the codebook uh, appeared here, and then we have leftover words. Um, another relevant aspect is that um, I have tendency to save all of my dictionaries uh, at each iteration. So after I would increase the number of terms that are in the content by, let's say, 5 or 10 or 15, I have tendency to save. It's just a habit of mine, which I always recommend for a specific reason. Um, many things may happen, right, with, with uh, electricity, etc. cetera. Um, but more than that, sometimes we have hard time realizing where some content should be, uh, sh should be part of, right? So should we maybe put it in the foundation or in the target variable? So we need to go back and forth with our colleagues to make sure that everything is organized. And if we have an earlier version, we can see what happened before and compare. So this is just some friendly, friendly point of view. Um, another interesting aspect that I have tendency to do is to uh, export the frequency table to the disk, which can always help me keep track of how I'm actually uh, distributing the content across the, the, the clusters and across the descriptors that I've, I've identified. Um, essentially, when we labeled the single terms, we are also interested in the phrases. And another interesting aspect that can help us also create the, the general map is the topics that are provided automatically by uh, Wordset. So if you go to topic, and if you go to the topic extraction with the factor analysis, um, you can set up how would you like the topics to be uh, extracted and which is the, the minimum factor loading that the word should reach in order to be retained in the factor solution. Now, keep in mind that, again, uh, despite the outstanding work provided by Provalis, uh, some topics uh, are not maybe in the direction that you might want to, to them to be. And this is something that is now coming from the research perspective of you, right? So um, it is up to you to see whether the label of that topic is appropriate to the content within the topic. Meaning, uh, simple uh, renaming might bring a lot of value to the understanding of the field, right? So this is automatically generated. But again, this particular label is created by Provalis based on learning processes. And this is something where the researcher contribution comes very, very important. So be attentive uh, whether to adopt those automatic labels. Sometimes they are uh, outstanding, but in some cases they need some, some fine, fine tuning. Apart from that, when we look at the phrases, um, I always have tendency to the first look at those that have higher frequency and then to uh, enable uh, those that have lower because I'm, I'm, I'm a, a stepwise, uh, uh, I'm a person who uh, 
let's say, follows a stepwise approach as much as possible. And I try to make sure that I don't have a much of noise uh, in front of me. So I, I, I first enable those that have minimum frequency of five, six, or seven, and then I put down to three, four, two, so that I can see how to organize them uh, from, uh, from, from there. Good. Now, words that can uh, identify the most frequent phrases, and they are usually appearing, uh, appearing here. And then it's really up to you just to drag and drop them to where they, they, they should be uh, assigned. Another interesting thing is the named entities. Um, and this is actually a, a pattern-based uh, algorithm that depending on what is the aim of your research can help you identify persons, locations, organizations, and actors. So in our case, when we did this open innovation, OE was open innovation, very relevant for us. And, and this is um, enabling you to identify which of those acronyms are being used. Should they be maybe part of your content? How to include them? And to which frequency do they actually appear? Sometimes acronyms have tendency to be uh, vastly used, and they have tendency also to generate noise uh, at some at some cases. So it's very uh, relevant to look to look at them. Good. Another relevant uh, opportunity, another relevant tab provided by Worset is concurrences. Now this dialog box is. Um, allowing us to specify whether the clustering should be performed on keywords or on cases. Um, concurrence is actually a, an option to specify how those uh, concurrences will be performed. Uh, sometimes we do the same paragraph, sometimes the same document, uh, et cetera. So that's, that's really up to you. Um, and the index is the option that allows the selection of the similarity measure used in, in, in multidimensional scaling. By definition, it's Jacardi coefficient. So that is that is that is already. Are available and which of them fit the, the aim of, of your mapping uh, activities. Now, the um, outcome that comes of the co occurrences is that uh, you have a set of nodes. And the nodes that co-occur more often are plotted close together. And there is a very interesting button here that allows you to display uh, or hide the numeric value associated with this link. So um, in more than that, there is a very interesting option that allows you to change the size of those nodes and their associated text. So basically what we were able just at the first glimpse to see here that uh, quantitative studies uh, in this particular field uh, occur uh, very often with the studies that are aiming to portray the performance level. Um, that in Europe, there was a lot of studies regarding openness, that uh, knowledge-based view is very tightly portrayed with sustainability. Um, so these are very good indicators for us at the first stages. And another very relevant thing and, and why we are using Worcester to that high extent is uh, if you look down at the processing time, uh, it took only 1.7 seconds. So in really no time, you are having an opportunity to see the first um, glimpse of what your map or what is the field telling you, which of those fields, nodes on, on, and descriptors are put together and whether that makes sense, right? So, I mean, before entering any, any mapping process, we have some background knowledge. And regardless of how, how vast or, or not it is, we, we have some background that enables us to say, okay, well, performance is usually measured quantitatively. So it really makes sense that quantitative methodologies portrayed closer to it, right? And, and that resource-based view is close to collaboration, uh, et cetera. Um, moving forward, another interesting aspect is the proximity plot. So in this proximity plot, uh, it is measured all the distances that are represented by the bars. So the closer the object is to the selected one, the longer the bar will be. So if you look, for example, uh, the open strategy and the performance, maybe this is not the best one to take a look, but none, nonetheless, I think it's illustrative enough. You can see, for example, that uh, in the medium high technology, the open strategy is uh, measured more or to higher extent that qualitative is not uh, very much uh, represented etc and very very relevant and and, and I'm, I'm very much in favor that uh, provalis provides this at every single step is that all of these figures all of these plots can always be exported saved printed at a very high resolution and this comes very handy when we go into the, the publication processes okay 
So now that we have our content created, and now that we have our uh, dictionary built, and we observe that what are the nodes telling us uh, actually is sound, we are going to enter into the cross tab. In the cross tab, there is a specific option, which is called correspondence plot. In that correspondence plot, you have opportunity to perform multiple correspondence analysis. Now, apart from that, another very interesting aspect uh, that is being given by uh, Vorset is the following, and it relates to these particular fields here. Now, if you look at those in, 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 in your uh, in your in your board stuff, uh, you have opportunity there to put forward what you would like to tabulate and with what and what would you like to display. And there are a set of statistics that can help you identify whether some aspects are uh, more represented or less represented over the time, and you can perform different set of statistics. For example, if you look the total frequency of the keywords and you put them over the year, so how often they appear or not appear and you perform the t-square on them, you can see, for example, that there are significant differences to which extent medium and low technology as, as, a, as a level was identified or was part of the, of the field. While, for example, the intellectual property is represented, but it was uh, overall not many substantial changes. So that means that it was always um, part of, of the field. And maybe this is not something that you would devote a lot of time portraying, but rather acknowledging its, its, its value and recognize its relevance for the overall uh, map of, 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 of the field which you are portraying. Good. So once we select the, the, the correspondence analysis, we are actually being provided by a two-dimensional map. Now, keep in mind that uh, Worset provides you two-dimensional map, but it also provides you a three-dimensional map. So it's really up to a uh, set of rule of thumbs and, and, and uh, the backgrounds that, that you may have in, 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 in statistics to understand what uh, and which amount of dimensions are best uh, illustrating your intellectual, intellectual field. So in this particular case, uh, when we observed the results, we saw that two dimensions are portraying 43% of the field, and the third dimension, although it is illustrative, does not provide, uh, actually adds a bit of complexity to reading, and as such, we remained with uh, only two dimensions. Now, what are the pros of correspondence analysis in Worset? It is a very straightforward method to obtain the map, as you can see in, in roughly let's say three clicks, you have the analysis performed, very robust approach, and you can plot uh, keywords and you can add any additional variables such as age uh, or year or whatever might be of your interest. You can also plot IDs of cases and you can obtain different types of plots, 2D, um, 3D. And something that I, I believe it's very generous of Provalis's day, or at least they, 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 they used to, or I believe it's still on, uh, one month free trial. Uh, so that, that uh, all of us can experiment in, in, the, in the fields that are of our, of our interest. And that is basically what, what I had in mind for today. So I'm ready for any question that, that may be. And I hope that you enjoy. Okay, thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, can you please uh, type them into the chat um, version, uh, chat version, chat section <laughs> of the website? And uh, we'll take uh, as many as like as we can. Um, one question: um, What do you see as a difference, or when do you use topic extraction versus co-occurrence? So um, I use topic extraction before I actually go to co-occurrence because where where for me topic extraction comes extremely valuable. Um, is especially in the moment when I'm building the whole process of, of, of dictionary of the content, right? So very, very often for me, topics uh, gives a first glimpse of what might be there. Um, I'm, I'm in a big, I'm, I'm in favor of the topic extraction approach uh, because it, it, it really gives you opportunity to understand, okay, wait, I have... Uh, openness, I have partner, I have breadth and depth. So that is really openness in, in innovation partner, meaning that this is an interesting thing, right? So that's a topic that is being very often used in, 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 in this particular field. So I should really give it a more attention when coding. 
And that is something that uh, I have tendency to use as, let's say, uh, as intermediate step. Okay. Um, somebody just uh, sent a question, says there's no book on word stats. How do you secure the practical knowledge? There is a manual uh, yeah. of word stat and uh, there are tutorials of word stat. Um, there is also a help section of word stat. Um, as I said at the beginning, if maybe not everybody was here at the time, today we released uh, WordStat 9. So uh, WordStat 9 is now available on the website. Uh, you can take a look at it. Uh, you can also upgrade uh, through the pricing section on the website, or if you, are, if you don't have it yet, you can go uh, directly uh, to, um, you can get it uh, directly. It's the one you download now. Uh, question, is it better to first extract phrases at the beginning of your analysis to have a have an idea of pertinent topics? Um, well, actually, this is something that um, I, I, have, I, I have tendency to do the phrases for one particular aspect, um, especially if I'm looking in the field that is the phrase itself. So if I'm looking in this case in the field that is open innovation, so that's a phrase. And then it kind of makes sense to start from phrases, right? And, and another another aspect to take a look. Phrase is consistent of several individual terms, right? So phrase can be anything from two to, I don't know, let's say six, seven, eight, eight different uh, single terms. Um, as such, yes, it, it, it's good to start with extraction of phrases, uh, but keep in mind that this is just the first part. So then I, I really believe that the big, big, big part of our work goes back in this stage when we are looking at, uh, at the single, single terms. And I, I believe that is where the, the value of, of those who are coders comes, comes into play. And something that, uh, sorry, if I'm just going too fast, I, I want to, to show you one thing uh, while, while we are speaking of this aspect, not here, a bit later, um, just apologies, yeah, here. So for example, in the leftover terms, um, what I have always tendency to do, I do the right click, yeah, and, and then I put uh, in the particular context. So there is a, a, another uh, keyword in context uh, tab. So what I have tendency to do, I have my, um, this part of the window open, I have my leftover words open, and then here on the, on the far right side, I open a keyword in context. So for every single term before uh, I, I use, uh, or make sure I want to see how it fits in the context. Yeah, so I, I always have all of these three open when I'm working with uh, with Worsted. I, I hope that I that I that I answered. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a question that's asked to a lot of people. It was asked mm -hmm. to Mike. It's been asked to other people. Um, uh, maybe you have um, a more expansive answer, but. Um, uh, do you have a, a place or an idea of where you can uh, go to get, um, uh, other than the, the Provalis Research website, uh, where you can go to get dictionaries uh, that you can either use or, you know, modify yeah, sure. to your own uses? So what, what I do, and, and I know what my PhD supervisor Miguel did and our colleagues, and for all of those papers that, that I, I put there, there is a supplementary material in the journal. Um, so if you go to the article, uh, you have a supplementary material, and we are actually uh, uh, obliged to, to perform, uh, to provide a, a, a dictionary that we perform, right? Because the, that's the only way that we can justify what we've done. As such, uh, all of them are, uh, at least in my case, I'm 100% sure, available in the supplementary material within any of those publications. Okay. I don't know. This is a, a fairly general question. I'm mm -hmm. not exactly sure what, I, I think I the Person, I know what the person missed means, but do you recommend a minimum number of cases? Uh, minimum number of cases. Uh, so again, uh, this is a part of methodological paper we are crafting right now, but I have tendency to include, when you think about the field, right? And, and I, I'm not sure, but I assume that the one who asks is also academic and interested uh, in this from the publication perspective, right? So if you look at the field and, and you re realize that something is emerging, yeah, uh, that means that that is a potentially a direction in which the field should go. So if you have a, if you have a, a number of cases that is below 10%, uh, that can mean one of the two things. One thing can mean that this is emerging and new. 
So it's definitely good to, to provide it as a, as a future direction when you are crafting your, your uh, portrayal of the field, or it means that it just didn't pick up. And how to look at that? You look at that by filtering the year. So you look at the decades, for example, or a particular year, and that if that number remains at a low percentage, but it's persistent over time, well, then, then it's something to think of. But it, if it happens just in the last, let's say, few years, and it already reached 10%, I would not include it in the map per se, but I would portray it as a future direction. And you actually have a few that we identified in, in, our, in, in our latest paper, which is uh, artificial intelligence in marketing. We, 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 use, uh, we used, I believe, 5% or 10. I, I'm really not sure, but that was, that was kind of um, cutoff that we used. Uh, and we identified some that were uh, providing, let's say, some interesting path for the future. So uh, my rule of thumb is 10%. Uh, but again, I, I know some that also go for five. Uh, so that's that's pretty much it. What are good TF IDF values that can help with cutoffs? Well, I don't basically use TF IDF. I look at the number of, or better say percentage percentage of cases. Um, that's that's basically it. Um, because for me, it's interesting, uh, and I don't do it here in this perspective. How I do it actually, I look at the perspective of the. Um, sorry. Uh, here, if you look at the it was one of the first slides. So, if you look at the categorization, so if you click here, uh, there there will appear a, a new window that will tell you at which level would you like categorization to happen. So, would you like to let that to happen at the level of the descriptor, which is the term or a phrase? Would you like it to happen at the at the broader cluster or the whole the whole group? So, I have tendency to put it within the cluster. So, let's say institutional theory, and I see how often that institutional theory happen in the in the in the percentage of cases, right? So, if it's below that ten percent or above, and then I have tendency to make a decision based on that because a term uh, is 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 another is another uh, sub aspect, and we are actually uh, more interested in portraying the map on 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 this second level, not the third level uh, identification identificators. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, the question, and I, th I think I know the answer, um, but <laughs> what is the, uh, where, uh, well, sorry, I skipped it. No. Um, what's the best way to get a copy of the methodological paper that you're mentioning? Uh, once it gets published <laughs> okay. to, to my Google Scholar, we are still crafting it and, and I hope over the summer will be, will be completed. It's, uh, it's, it's a bit hard to do everything when, when you are still at this early stage of the career. <laughs> okay. And, and you have all the references, you have a number of the references at the end. Of yes. Your, uh... today, 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 I've actually showed uh, many references that I use. In, in, and obviously, all of those papers that are here uh, are very uh, clear. On, on methodological section and all of those that were published before, obviously. So basically looking at any of the methodological section will give you a glimpse. And uh, actually some of them are very, very elaborate on how age step is performed and you can call up on them. So, so yeah. Okay. Um, well, we're five after now. I think we've sort of, we've, we've gone, uh, we've gone past. Uh, Bozidar, I want to thank you very much for your, okay. uh, for your um, for your presentation, um, if you um, if people do you have your can you put up on the screen your um, yeah uh, your uh, your contact information please yeah here it is uh, so be uh, watch at ucp okay so if if people have additional uh, questions uh, they can yeah. email him directly and I'm sure he'll be happy to, uh, to 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 respond to you but so thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, very much uh, for attending. Um, this brings an end brings an end to our spring session of our lunch and learns. We're in the process of scheduling our summer and fall sessions. If you would like to present your work, please get in touch with us through our website, or you can email me directly at tony.ross, R-O-S-S, at provalisresearch.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Just as an FYI, um, we typically have more than 100 people registered to these lunch and learns. About half or so actually show up because, I mean, it's free. So some people just register and don't come. But we do record it and it's on the website. So, you know, I would expect most of those people who have registered are going to come and look at the, uh, at, the, at the recording at some point. So it's a good audience for you and for your research. Um, it's also a good way to uh, interact with uh, and 
with different colleagues. Please watch our, our Twitter feed, our Facebook pages, and our newsletter for announcements. And once again, check out Wordstat9 or you can, on the What's New section of our uh, of our uh, uh, of the Wordstat page on our website. And you can also see the press release on our website. And uh, we look forward to uh, uh, getting together with you soon. Thank you and have a rest, uh, great rest of the day, afternoon, evening, wor morning, wherever you happen to be. Thank you again, Bozadar. It, uh, it was great. And there's a lot of very uh, um, positive comments. Thank you, Tony, very much. Thank you, everyone. And if you need any comment from me, and I, uh, in collaboration with Professor Miguel, I also organized workshop on CUDA Manor and Warstop. This was just a glimpse of what we do. We have a one and two and three days uh, uh, training. So feel free to contact and, and then share with Tony in collaboration. We can organize everything without, uh, without many problems. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.